What's up, what's up, and welcome to another episode, Master Modes Film Session. And today, I want to talk about Montrevious Adams. Um, I thought he did some really uh, impressive things in that Chiefs game. Now, obviously, we know the Chiefs game as a whole wasn't that good for the Steelers. I get it. But Montrevious definitely continued to flash in that game, and I think he's played himself into an interesting situation in terms of, you know, continuing to use his services going into next season, potentially. But as we always do, I'm going to highlight him. This is the big man right there, okay? And after that, I will play it in full speed, and then we'll break it down. Okay. Alrighty, alrighty. So first off, man, starting this off um, with Montrevious, as you can see, he's in a zero technique, right? Just meaning he's head up to the nose guard, or excuse me, head up to the center. And this particular center is a really good center by the name of Creed Humphrey. I'm sure a lot of people have heard about him. Uh, even people in Steeler Nation have contemplated whether we should have taken him in the second round instead of Pat Firemuth. So very, very uh, viable opponent in this particular uh, setting right here. But the thing that I like, man, we're starting this play off. Number one for Montrevious is his hand placement, right? And I'm gonna play this from the tight angle and I'm gonna also show the wide as well. But as soon as he gets off the ball, I love his hand placement. Inside hands on both sides, right? Not outside the framework, so that way he's controlling the steering wheel, right? Get into that chest plate fast. Whoever gets there first typically wins early on in the battle before you know you start working your counters, your counter moves and things like that. But I do like this by Montrevis to start it off. Now, this is the beautiful part right here. You see this, he's working half a man here, okay? And I'll keep playing the tapes out, we can see it while I talk through it, but he goes to work half a man right here. And this is important because when you're talking about rushing the passer, you never wanna rush directly down the center of a player because that's where they're gonna have their most power and you're also gonna get stuck at times trying to just get free once you beat a guy, right? You run him over, you're gonna trip over him and things like that. But the thing that Montrevious does here is get skinny through the hole, okay? So when he first comes off this line, uh, off the burst, see, inside hand placement. Now, right here, he's already setting it up. He understands, hey, I got my outside hand on Creed's outside uh, delt, right? The back of his shoulder right here. And from there, now he starts to open it up because he knows, okay, I have this guy where I want him. I'm gonna use his leverage. I'm gonna use his body weight against him in this manner right here. Very similar to your pushing, uh, the push-pull techniques that you see certain defenders use as well. But that's what he's doing because now, Where's Creed's helmet? Behind Montrevis's body. Where is Creed's body? Pretty much even to behind Montrevis's body. You could tell that by Creed's arm being extended behind him like this. Now it's just, hey, run through the arm. And he clears it with the offhand. Guard's too late to give him help. And now I also like this. It's subtle, but very, very detail oriented right here. So he doesn't leave his feet. Okay, thought about it, but he doesn't leave his feet. But I also like the fact that he mirrors. You see these hands? You flash the hands because that is gonna make the quarterback have to pump and bring that ball back down. And by doing so, now you can close the gap and ultimately finish the play to get the sack. But nice technique and fundamentals, not jumping, not allowing Mahomes to outrun him to his side. And of course, good job by Cam, right? Because Cam is the contain here. If Cam doesn't do his job right here, Mahomes can continue to burst out. But because Cam is doing his responsibility, that allows Montrevis to get the, uh, the chance to finish this playoff with a nice sack right here. And when I play it from the wide, you'll see why this play was so important. Now, granted, we know how this drive ended, but this particular play, this sack right here, is a touchdown saving sack, all right? So, like I said, we'll show this on the next clip so that way you will see exactly what I'm talking about. So as I was saying in that previous clip, that sack by Montrevis, man, it definitely kept points off the board um, in terms of the Chiefs being a, getting a chance to score. Because when you watch this route combination, right, you got one, two, three, I'll, I'll highlight it, one, two, three receivers over here, one guy over here, back is all set, right? So you got your three by one, all right? But you also know this guy, condensed split. We call it a nasty split on the backside. Information, information. Start getting your antennas going up, right? Because you know, he's not being aligned like this for no reason. Typically those guys are, you know, bottom numbers extended. So red flags come up, right? But just watch these route combinations and guys that are free, right? 
so right now, this is my trade right? He just beat Creed. He's about two, maybe three yards away from Mahomes. These are the binds <laughs> that, you know, potentially are here. So we obviously know he has the underneath route from Mahomes, right? That's why, though, because the Steelers are playing a cover three zone right here, okay? So he has this guy right now. But with this guy and this guy right here, you have a situation because they're deeper than your linebackers, right? And we know Mahomes, he has the touch. He has the ability to put this ball out here. With Joe Hayden being on the outside, you essentially have three guys. One, or so one, two, three for just Joe and Minka right here. So depending on how he bends this and bends this, you got Minka in a bind. Depending on what Joe does, if he squeezes on this, well now this guy, you know what I mean? So all of those plays are in, uh, all of those receivers were very much in play on this particular uh, call right here. And even if you want to take the safe route, the underneath throw, or even the check down, he had those options, but because how fast Montrevis won, it didn't allow him to see those guys. It didn't allow him to take that shot and ultimately put points on the board for this Chiefs team right here. But yeah, like I said, man, this is a really good job by uh, Montrevis though, man. You see the hand placement, you see the uh, working a half a man, getting vertical, love this right here, man. Really good work right here by him, really good work. All right, now this last play we're gonna show from Montrevis just once again shows his playmaking ability, but this time in the run game, which as we know is very, very important. But before we go any further, if you are enjoying the content, make sure you like the video. Also, if you haven't subscribed, well, hit the subscribe button, obviously. Oh, and new year, new you, I get it. So if you need inspiration, if you're trying to get back on the right track or even start the year off the right way, make sure you check out my book, The Moat Theory of Your Life, help you become a person of impact and inspiration, man. We know I talk about some of my favorite qualities in life in terms of how I continue to be successful, so maybe it can help you out. But definitely check it out at moatstheory.com. Now, let's get to this breakdown. All right, right here in the middle is Mr. Montrevis. You see him highlighted or circled right there, however you want to word it. I'll play this in full speed, and after that, man, we're going to break it down. All right, all right. Now, this play, <laughs> I like it for a couple of reasons. Now, number one, we know it was a four yard game, so obviously not the best in terms of the overall outcome of the play. But when we're talking about what Montrevis did, to me, I enjoy it because if the pieces around him are doing what they're supposed to do, this play is probably a no game, maybe even, you know, a uh, one or two yard game tops, but still high quality nose tackle play. So, with my Travis, the thing I like right now is he's getting his grasp, right? Because we talk about where he was lined up at. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll start that back so you can see it. But like I say, he's lined up. Initially, he's in a shade, right? Or initially, he's in a he's in a shade technique inside of the uh, of the guard, and then post uh, whichever one of these guys called the movement, he lines back to his normal right over the center zero technique right so we just call that stimming if you hear anyone say hey they stem to that front that's all they did they showed one look it was probably they were showing a little bit of a um of a under front and then from there just stem back to their basic three four outlook so from there though hat and hands right talk about that low pad level inside arms into that stem wall first that's key next thing Watch his feet, right? Because we said that ball was snapped mm, about the it was 34, 33, or whatever. So let's see. How much yard does he give up? Does he win his grass or not? Now, right here, what do we see? He's still where he's supposed to be. Now, granted, the rest of his uh, counterparts or his contemporaries, they are a little bit downfield. And that's part of the reason why this becomes a four yard game because the running back does have a little bit of a soft edge here. But the thing that I like about Montrevis is this, man. He does not give up any ground and he doesn't allow himself to stay blocked. 
He uses his hands, but then also uses a block release to get off the ball and get down the line of scrimmage to make this play out by the numbers. Because, like I said, man, the rest of the guys around him, they, they kind of, you know, let him down a little bit here. Now, Alex Highsmith, he does too good of a job in a sense of setting the edge, but hat, you know, his hat goes inside, needs to be a little bit more outside to force this running back to stay in here. So what I'm saying is this. So if Highsmith's helmet is out on this side, it's going to force his running back to cut in here, which is where Montrevis is. But instead, because it ends up going this side, he's able to bounce out, which then makes Montrevis have to do a lot more work in his job. And, uh, you know, that's part of just the, the things with team defense. Now, I like how Cam Sutton flashes at the end here to force it back to Montrevis. But as a whole, you can see, you know, Montrevis, man, like I said, going against Creed Humphrey. This is a really good center right here. But the hands, the hat, not giving up any yards, staying square, got the nice, uh, we always say have a, a two by four essentially between your feet. You never want to cross over. Staying shuffling down the line of scrimmage. I like this right here a lot by him. And like I said, he has, since we've acquired him, he has continued to make plays like that both in the past game and in the running game. I definitely think he's someone that we should consider, you know, acquiring and keeping here for a little bit longer because he does continue to flash like this. And I just wonder, with the full offseason, what that could look like. But as we always do, man, I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts on Montrevis, man. And if you think that, you know, we should move forward with him, potentially uh, taking over a larger role next year. But either way, I appreciate you. And until next time, baby, peace.